I can't with the blitz, I just bought the fire. I can't fuck with none of these lies, they gon' fucking lie. Bitch, you know this get insane, you can fucking die. I just put a bitch in the middle, you got five guys. I'm a five guy. Welcome back, kittens. Daily videos back on the menu. Today, I have an actual topic I want to talk about because I can, I can do that now. If I'm posting more frequently, I don't just have to talk about the actual training in the video. There's not, it's, a, it's the same push day you guys have seen me do numerous times. Same structure, slightly different exercise selection, but it's, uh, it's what was in the video last time. So... This is nothing new. There's not much to talk about. I got... Reps went well. Uh, I guess... Ooh, I'll write this down to talk about in a future video. But the uh, the progression scheme I'm running on my incline barbell is feeling good. Granted, you know, I got baby weight on there right now. But it's the... Um, it's feeling right. It's, it's feeling proper. I think I'm going to end this block quite stronger than the last one but yeah that's all there is really to say about that i have a topic i want to talk about today um one of you love we should nobody cares about enthusiasts hold on you gotta you gotta give me a second i want to read his name Fer <laughs> ferreira brites francisco sebastian <laughs> comments it god that's a long name dude he commented could you do a home gym tour and talk a bit about exercise selection when you only have barbells dumbbells and a pulley now uh you're, you're not getting a home gym tour not not for a while but you can get an answer to that comment i told him yeah i'd do that i told him that about almost two months ago but i always deliver very slowly but i deliver so, he said, uh, barbells, dumbbells, and a pulley. If, if there's a pulley, in my opinion, then home gym is not really a constraint. Like, if you have a pulley, you kind of, that's no longer a constraint. Um, at that point, it's just what exercises do you think are good, right? Because a lot of, like, sure, very specific machines aren't available, but if you have a pulley, you can basically do everything. And so I'm not including that. I'm just going to go with barbells and dumbbells. But I'm going to even try to keep it as close to just barbells as possible. Just so it's as universally applicable as possible. So that it's not useless. Because, and especially in my garage, like, what would I do in a home gym? Again, I can basically do anything with the shit I have coming in. But, so I'm not going to really treat it like a... Back when I started this whole F bed thing, the whole that whole F bed thing, I'm not doing that anymore. So I shouldn't say this like it's present tense. But back then, I um, I only had the barbell and I had specialty bars. That I won't be including that. Also, this is this is meant for um, for you peasants that can only afford a uh, bar and plates and a, and a rack. And, and some adjustable dumbbells. That's all I'm working on. And calisthenics, I forgot to say that. Calisthenics is also um, being factored in. Because, like, obviously, that's the, the mo that's shit people do with no equipment. So, that's obviously being factored. But, I'm just going to go muscle group by muscle group. I'm going to try to keep it, like, three-ish exercises per muscle group. Um... Because otherwise, I will just go on for too long. Starting with chest. Now, I'm not the biggest authority to speak on chest. So, you can take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt. So, currently, I feel like the the meta is... Um, I, I really like incline plus dips. I'm a fan of that combo. So, incline barbo and dips. And, uh, yeah, I forgot to say, an adjustable bench is a uh, part of the equipment package. 
ink coin barbell and dips very very good combo because they just hit something that the other isn't doing and then like flat bench so that's like a big three in my opinion for building the chest i if we're including dumbbells you can do flies but i don't know man i i'm not the biggest fan of flies uh i'm really just enjoying relying on presses right now and just changing the angles so yeah in, in, incline dips and then flat bench that's a that's a barbell and calisthenic staples i'm not the biggest fan of push-ups i'm also not going to be including rings in this and it's not because i think it's too specialized or inaccessible for most people rings are very accessible it's just because i have no experience with them and i don't have like any right to speak on that for traps i guess because we're going from head to toe traps conventional deadlifts yeah definitely conventional deadlifts um i don't i don't i'm not even going to debate this just uh enough said there you do a power shrug and oh well, i'm speaking upper traps by the way and um what the fuck else is there even do because that's what built my traps i got nothing else to say to you man like delts so i'm gonna divide it up through the uh the different heads front delts are gonna be largely hit through inclines more than anything as far as things that aren't a shoulder press that still hit them um i think a lot of people overrate the level of overdevelopment you get in your front delts from like your other pressing when it when it's um only like flat pressing i don't think flat pressing if, if you're just doing that it's going to leave a lot to be desired in your front delts but yeah if you're doing a lot of inclines and that covers a lot of front delts along with shoulder pressing if you do a narrower grip more lean back ohp like i used to that's gonna be a lot of front delt unfortunately in my case because i wanted it to oh i have an alarm going off <laughs> i gotta stop that shut the fuck up shut up Anyway, yeah, you know what? Oh, if you so if you're just into like chasing numbers, then like the lean back narrower grip OHP is good, just because it's a fun exercise. I um, I always enjoyed it a lot, but I just stopped doing it because even though I was stronger on it, it just wasn't doing a lot for my side delts. But if you don't care about that, then yeah, that's good. And I guess I have to say three. You can do barbell front raises. And I'm not really one of those people that say... I'm not a big fan of the people that say, oh, don't ever isolate your front delts because they're going to be overdeveloped from your uh, pressing movements. If you're if you're naughty, I, uh, I think you should worry a bit less about overdeveloping any part of your delts. I think uh, I think you're, you have the wrong priorities there. Or you're overestimating your abilities. But... Yeah, so it's, it's it's okay to do front raises. It's fine. It's, it's uh, you don't have to feel bad about it. For side delts, lateral raises, dumbbell. Um, the the ones I do on the floor, I'm a big fan of. The lateral raises is kind of a staple. I think that's going to be most people's go-to. At the at the end of the day, it's a it's a no-brainer. I explained why I preferred Wu raises um in the last video because you kind of grind through that sticking point. So that's a great option. But if you're doing them with plates, they do have slightly less um, overloadable weight increments and you can do them with dumbbells and that's fine. But yeah, some sort just some sort of lateral raise variation. Uh, the one lying on the floor, the Jeff Nippard style, I'm liking so far. I, uh, it's too early for me to comment too much on it, but it, it does have a good stretch. It's very good for stretch me to hypertrophy, maybe. Um, but I can't really speak much on that. It just uh, feels nice, though. And upright rows. Upright rows are, would be the barbell uh, shoulder elevation of choice. I stopped doing them because uh, I kept on slamming my chin with them and almost destroyed my teeth twice. And the second time was en enough for me to say, okay, I'm, I'm, fuck this. But... They are good. You just don't have to go all the way up or just don't hit yourself in the face like I kept on doing. 
Behind the neck press, also a great option if you can. I currently am not behind the neck pressing, even though I was for a good bit. Fucking tremendous. I love that exercise, but it, uh, you know, if you don't have good external rotation mobility of some sort of shoulder imbalance, it's going to exacerbate it because it's just going to come through on there. And a lot of these guys saying like, oh no, this is doing the movement is actually going to heal it. Like sometimes, no, so, sometimes just no. Sometimes if you want to be able to do the movement, you have to deal with the imbalance or if you're not going to deal with the imbalance, you just can't do the movement. But it, uh, there's, there's a lot of cases where overuse injuries will just be exacerbated by doing the movement more and more and it just builds up more instead of you building more tolerance. I learned that the hard way and it sucks, but you know, maybe someday I'll be able to come back to it. If you have good external rotation mobility though in both shoulders, then it's a perfectly valid exercise. Rear delts, Powell raises, very good. Wide grip rows. This is sort of the um, the barbell exercise equivalent for the rear delts is wide grip rowing. I always like to, if I can, I like to include some sort of wide grip rowing in my routines because uh, it's it's uh, it feels really good on the rear delts, and I always found they it did well for me in my rear delts, and it's also great for the upper back, which we'll get to. And like third exercise, do we really need one? Like you can just do normal rear delt flies, but I like the power raises. Yeah, you can just do normal rear delt raises with a dumbbell. For the upper back, moving on to that, for the mid to lower traps. Now, here's the thing with, I would, the first thing I would recommend is dumbbell rows. However, you might not be like me, where you can have dumbbells that go up like over 200 pounds. It's uh, when, when I think about like what I'm saying, as far as like trying to make this an accessible list of exercises, it's just that's dumbbell rows. They're gonna be if you have just normal dumbbell weights, like normal just one dumbbells, what they go like probably on average, like, I don't know, like 100 pounds or something. You're going to outgrow those really quick if you're not doing that stupid fucking pencil neck bullshit. Really focusing on the squeeze and not letting your torso rotate, even though it gives a better stretch. Dr. Milo Wolf. Fucking dumbass. But the, um, yeah, so dumbbell rows, if you have heavy enough dumbbells, but if you don't, then, uh, that's disqualified once you get too strong. So I will give three more other options. Barbell rows, great thickness builder. I always really like them. They're, um, people debate whether it's a lat or an upper back exercise. I think it's both, but if you do a wider grip though, again, like what I said with the rear delt, it's also a great upper back exercise. Tremendous, tremendous for the uh, upper mid back. I really like wide grip rowing variations. I also love wide grip uh, stiff legs and RDLs. I was always a big shill in the past for a snatch grip, uh, stiff legs, snatch grip RDLs. And I'm probably going to continue to be in the future when I bring them back at some point when I decide it's time to do them again. Because they're an amazing upper back thickness builder. Just an amazing, um, an amazing posterior chain builder as well. See, a lot of things about these barbell movements is that they uh, they hit the muscle we're talking about, but they also hit other things because they're compound exercises. So um, tremendous. But moving to the lats, as for the lats, I um, pull ups, chin ups, just all those variations are an obvious no brainer. Barbell rows with a narrower grip and uh, bending down more. So if you do more of like a Yates style row, you, you will feel a good like squeeze in your lower lats when you do it because you're really like tucking that elbow to the hip. But a, a, a row of any kind is already not fully lengthening the lats. And I think that it says a lot that it's still such a great exercise for building lats that um, 
getting the biggest stretch possible is not always the biggest deal. But yeah, if you wanna if you wanna get more laughs out of it, letting that um letting that bar really drift down at the bottom and doing like even like sort of a flexion row, especially after concentric failure. That's how I always used to do it. Like I wouldn't be too focused on doing like the strictest. I'd be bring up like a decent amount of slop to my reps. But once I hit concentric failure, letting uh letting like a couple partials at the bottom, just like just for a couple of seconds, milking out some uh like flexion row type lat stretch action. Feels really good on the lats. I've had great results with it. I took that from like uh, 150 something to over two plates. And uh, my back did very well from it. Pullovers, pullovers of any kind. God tier, I, I don't I don't know why pullovers are, and it doesn't have to be dumbbell pullovers, golden era style or whatever. Just any sort of like pullover variation where um, you can, you're lying, so you can get a good uh, like opening up of the rib cage. Not only just because that's the rib cage expansion benefits. Uh, I feel like you have to be arching to do that, and that's the pullover that's best for your rib cage is probably also going to take a bit from how good it is for the lats, in my experience, because um, you want to kind of keep that it's hard to explain you don't want to arch your back too much to get good lat gains on a pullover because a pullover is meant to be a stretch based exercise and if you arch at the hips then you're reducing the stretch on the lats but you're also getting more expansion of the rib cage so it's kind of a trade-off in my experience and yeah, it, the the big rib cage look is not very popular nowadays. I, it's what I'm going for, so I feel like mine's big enough at this point that I don't. I, I'm focusing more on just doing pullovers for uh, muscle growth now. But it's something I focus on a lot in the past because that's kind of the look I'm going for. But it's not very popular, so it's not something I feel like you should kind of scratch your head worrying about. It's as far as like the physique aesthetics meta, nobody really cares about a big rib cage nowadays, especially for natties where it's harder to fill that out. Um, sometimes it's not always the most viable, but the um, the pullover just done really focusing on getting good stretch on the lats, but like keeping that a uh, keeping that torso more rigid. Very great, and I don't and oh, yeah. What I was trying to even say is I don't know why people fucking shill that cable pullover the lap prayer you gotta call it a lap prayer you can't call it a pullover okay because that for some reason that word is just a fucking sin um but no the, the lap prayer in my opinion is such an overrated exercise it just you when you you don't get the same type of tension kind of leaning into it as you do when your back is against something and that weight is bearing down and your your torso can't go anywhere. And so it's just fucking loading that on your lats. It feels crazy. It's not the same, not the same at all. And I'm huge chill for pullovers. I think they have literally ever since I started doing them, there has been some form of pullover in my routine at all times. Amazing for back. So yeah, pull up variations, a barbell row and with a narrower grip and some flexion type action and uh, pullovers. And because I'm passionate about back training, we'll throw uh, T-bar rows in there if you have a handle. But that's not, not everybody has that. So uh, ignore that if you, if that's an option. Now moving to lower back, because your spinal erectors are their own, own thing. And I'm not even just talking about lower back. I'm talking about spinal erectors going head to toe. Spinal erectors um conventional deadlifts again good mornings good mornings are so good for spinal erectors because you get this with the bar on your like upper back like that it um you have to stay arched and that is so it is completely different on the spinal erectors once i started doing good morning variations it's just I would be doing them right now if my hamstring wasn't fucked up, but I have to do back extensions. And I like back extensions too, but for one, it's not an option on this list because that requires a uh, dedicated machine for that. And then two, 
It, um, I, I just prefer good mornings as far as like if I just want to grow my spawn erectors because yeah, you have to do that kind of full body rigidity action and that it, um, it feels like it hits more the upper spinal erectors as well. I've had like cramping pumps in my uh, upper spinal erectors from them. And when you really want the spinal erectors to be adding thickness to like, the entirety of your back. You don't, I don't know, maybe you're one of those people that just likes that kind of um, look where the lower back muscles are just bulging out. But in my opinion, the back should get thicker as you go up. And the... Uh, and so, so the spinal erectors are able to aid in that if they're well developed through and through. I don't have a third exercise because the spinal erectors are really simple muscle. I guess a Jefferson curl if you're really serious about isolating them. But I think they're just best hit through certain compound exercises like that that you'd be using to hit other things. So moving to the abs. I don't fucking train abs. <laughs> Next question. Moving to the posterior chain, like lower half. So, um, talking like glutes and hamstrings. Good mornings again. So you see, and then snatch grip, RDLs, or just normal RDLs, or just conventional deadlifts. Just very deadlift variations. Obviously, amazing. I love my deadlifts, and but yeah, you'll you'll get better appearance in your hamstrings better size from non-conventional deadlifts, even though I am a huge show for conventional deadlifts. The um, RDLs are going to mog them as far as muscle growth goes, but but they, in my opinion, conventional deadlifts are better for spinal erectors because they're just more weight. But we're talking about glutes and hamstrings, so I, I'm a big fan of... Uh, RDLs, if you're someone that cares more about getting a stronger conventional deadlift, so you care, you care, you care more about strength specificity. And then snatch grip RDLs or stiff legs, if you just care about bodybuilding, because I find those are a better total package, you also get more range of motion on your posterior chain. So it's going to be better for that. And then it's also going to be better for hitting other things that you're not going for in your posterior chain. So things like your upper back, your, uh, your erectors, the 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 thickness gains you get from it very nice very very nice um i said yeah i said good mornings as well good mornings tremendous and then if you're able to do nordics somehow then nordics i um i um but the thing is that's not really accessible for most people so I had a buddy once. I only ever seen one person do this in real life, but he had a, he had good hamstrings. He had a strong deadlift. And I think it's because he pushed this exercise harder than most people normally would is dumbbell leg curls. He would stick the dumbbell between his feet and then he would do leg curls with it lying on a bench. It worked perfectly fine for him. He, he went to my, he went to that gym, no longer my gym, uh, but I'll be back someday. Two twenty. He, w he went to that gym. There was two leg curl machines there. He didn't use either of them. He just did that. He, you know, he loved it. He had good hamstrings. So that's a viable option for those who can't do Nordics. Um, because I do think, yeah, just having a, a knee flexion exercise for the hamstrings. To, um, to get your best hamstring size and appearance, you know, it's, it's a part of the package. It's important. Quads. I, um, now I'm not the biggest squatter around, but I've always had at least decent looking quads compared to my squat. Squats are good. Squat, squats build good quads. Simply doing them grew my quads, even though I didn't even really get too strong on them. So squats, every time I don't squat for a while and I return to squatting, my quads get fucked up, dude. It's just different. So nothing compares to squats. Low bar is fine. I consider low bar better for me personally because of my leverages. I wouldn't fall into just the idea that a lot of people preach that just, oh, low bar is more of a hip dominant variation and high bar is more of a posterior chain variation. Well, not, or no, what the fuck? Uh, quad variation and low bar is more posterior chain. 
I don't quite agree because in some people, like in my case, leverages, there's a, there's a lot of torso lean that you can get on high bar due to the bar being higher. It creates a higher, um, arc of movement or whatever on your, um, on your hip joint. Like the, there's more torque on that joint because the weight is out further because the bar is higher on your back. And so the bar can pull you forward more than it can on a low bar. Like on a low bar, you'll be more forward, but you're not getting pulled forward more because the bar is lower. Uh, you're just more forward because simply to have that center of gravity, you have to be more forward because the bar is lower. But on high bar, it, it can pull you forward more. And if you don't have the leverages that um, makes that makes you more upright squatter, and it can actually, in my experience, be, because of like how the problems I have had squatting make it more of a hingy squat because you have a tendency to rise the hips, you you you, you fall forward, dump forward, and you have to then extend your hips up. And um, yeah, for me, low bar is actually more of a it feels like a leg press. So I prefer low bar, but this is all about your leverages. Front squats, god tier. Front squats are so good, and I can't wait to be doing them next block on a Brahm Williams program. I Cross arm front squats especially, I think they're very overhated. I think they're very good exercise because they also are a really good upper back exercise. If you do a lot of cross arm front squatting, you will get good lower traps, which is something people sleep on. Lower traps, um... They, they have to kind of isometrically contract a lot. And it's it's going to fucking grow them, dude. They're, um, so front squats, one of my favorite quad exercises. And I can't wait to do them again. And it's one of my favorite squat exercises. Like, it's, it's a squat I find pretty fun to do. It feels very comfortable. So front squats get a very, get an S tier from me. Reverse Nordics, as far as isolation goes, very good, you know. Uh, the leg extension machine is not going to be accessible to most and those which are cheap enough for most suck ass so reverse nordics very good for quads i love them i uh ever since i realized i could do them and and that uh and how much and i started doing them it, they're probably gonna be a staple for me for a very long time split squats split squats are also something you can do if you have dumbbells and um, now moving down to the calves. Calves, I'm not going to talk at length. I like donkey calf raises, but some people don't. I find that for calves, home gym calf raises are a bit of a pain in the ass because setting up the weight for them and then shit like that, it, it's, um, it's a bit of a chore. It's hard to kind of load that and so i um i like the donkey calf raise with a, with a weight belt you might be someone that prefers just loading a bar on your back and doing that or holding a dumbbell with uh and then doing single leg calf raise on like some stairs in my opinion you just have to find in this case i don't really have any suggestions you just have to find what feels right because for me it's the donkey calf raises however it um it's gonna be very individual i find because overall just none of these none of these are gonna be the best option calves are just one of the things that's best trained with actual like gym equipment so like i, I like doing it on the belt squat and i'm gonna have the little pulley coming soon to mimic that or a calf raise machine it, a lot of people that works for them it never worked for me because i always found that my heels would slip back and i never liked how um it felt like with it loading on my back and that pushing down on my heels, I felt like it uh, it really fucked with my Achilles tendon. But a lot of people will get a lot out of that. So calves are one of those that's, you know, either either throw a barbell on your back and do calf raise with that or do the donkey calf raise the way I do. Or yeah, you can do like single leg dumbbell calf raises on, a, on stairs. But... You, you got to pick what you like and can stick to more so than anything. The stick to part is the most important because, yeah, I just don't think any of the options are going to be optimal in this case. I do have a theory about a calf for calf exercise, though, that keeps it going through my mind is like either um, farmer's walks on tiptoes 
or yoke carries on tiptoes. This isn't even me just suggesting, this is just me like theorizing and, and thinking and, and letting those thoughts out. I feel, um, I, uh, I'm, t- I'm tweaking again. I just feel like there's, even though there's no range of motion, like you're just holding an isometric contraction for it. I don't know. It feels like there, there would be something there. It's kind of like how the whole fat guy, uh, calf size meme where like guys just get fat and they get huge calves from it. I don't know. It just feels like there's something there, but I just don't have the time to pursue that idea. But I want to put that idea out there. Moving on to the arms. Cause I went down head to toe to the torso. I didn't mention neck because if you do your deadlifts, you eat your food, then you won't be a pencil neck. And if you are, then I don't know, do just like neck extensions and, uh, neck curls with plates, but I never had to, I, uh, I just did my deadlifts. I did them a lot with high volume and grew my neck. Arms, starting with the triceps, triceps, rolling extensions, overhead extensions, and a jam press type variation. So that's just the big three, in my opinion. And I have, I have nothing more to say. And I won't elaborate or explain why. Biceps. Biceps are such a simple muscle, yet my thoughts on it are a bit complicated. Because I've, I've struggled for a while to like find my ideal formula for them. I think it's, they grow fine for me, but my triceps just grow so much faster that I'm constantly like, just like scratching my head, thinking about how to grow my biceps more and more and more. In, Cause I'm just constantly worried about them lagging behind my triceps. But you know, a barbell curl, dumbbell curl, Dumbbell incline curl if you have an incline bench, which uh, I was part of the equipment requirements as far as what I'm making on this list because I mentioned incline bench. So incline curls, there's preacher curls if you're um, doing the one arm on the incline bench. Or, you know, I, I'm not going to suggest anyone do the ridiculous preacher curl setup I do. If you're, you can just get a, you can get the ab mat uh, preacher pad, which I, uh, I saw, I think that's a really cool invention. So lets you do preacher curls uh, like by putting it on your lap. It's a very cool thing, it's not very expensive. So I think that's really viable for home gym dudes. But, and then um, I had something else in my mind. I, I'm a fan of spider curls. I talked about it in the last video. I'm a fan of them because I find that it's just a very, uh, it's a variation where you can just really load the bicep, even if you're not getting the most stretch range of motion or whatever. You just you just load the bicep and just like really grind through and get a ton of um, rep slowdown and cross bridging with it. So I find, yeah, spider curls are very good. And I'll, that's what I'm also say about the biceps. For the brachialis, brachioradialis complex, reverse curls and hammer curls. I prefer reverse curls though. I, uh, hammer curls, I always found that I personally, but I want to speak universally for people. I personally always found that hammer curls lent themselves to a lot of momentum for me because it pu- it puts the, um, your wrist is like in a position that makes it very like friendly for swinging versus on reverse curls. It feels, and, uh, supinated curls, it feels like you have to like really focus on, uh, contracting the muscles to move the weight up. Hammer curl, it just feels like when that wrist is uh, neutral, you can just get this really like comfortable swinging action, maybe because your joints are aligned in this way that it's not stressing the joints to do so. That it, it, Yeah, it, I'm not a fan of that. I always found that it just lent itself to shitty form for me, but to each their own. I know a lot of people are big fans of hammer curls. Forearms. I talked about this in a previous video, but actually banded um, bands, I feel like are pretty viable for forearm training because when you do like wrist curls with them or something, because the range of motion is so short, the tension isn't changing much uh, throughout the range of motion, like is usually the issue with band exercises. So it's pretty consistent. It's just kind of like doing with a cable. That's, vi- that's a viable option. Obviously, 
dumbbell or barbell wrist curls, finger curls, and wrist extensions if you want to grow that. And I think that's everything. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I will talk about more things in future videos, just more topics. Like I'll have like topics in the video that I want to talk about because sometimes I just have my thoughts on things I want to get out. I have something's written down. And because I'm posting more frequently and I'm talking in the videos, it just feels like I, uh, it gives me an opportunity to get things out there. So sometimes I'll be talking about the training. Sometimes I would just be talking, yapping about like whatever I want, right? Uh, like bitching about school or something. So now I have something like this. I don't really have a ton of super informative things I want to talk about. It's more of like a nerdy, yappy video. But I, uh, like if anyone has questions, I'm willing to willing to answer them but i'm not a big fan of uh like the inter intermediates that come on the internet and start yapping and giving their opinion like there's somebody like people um sh should listen to like they're entitled to people giving a shit about their opinion however if you shit nobody cares about enthusiasts want to hear mine i don't mind giving it so that's all i have to say about that push day went well and yeah, I'll have a video tomorrow of my pull day that I'm about to go do. Night-night kittens, sleep well.